Let's get back to our Mark Seagraves, who was on this story from the very beginning. Here. Now, Mark, Mark, you've covered the D.C. Council pretty much longer than any other full-time reporter on that beat. And you've seen other council members over the years charged and convicted of crime. So you know what, how this comes and goes. You tell us what happens next as far as council member White's ability to, to work and vote as a council member. And he's also in the middle of a, of a re-election campaign. What is the latest here? Yeah, Leon, there is a lot in play here. Council member White is currently chairman of the Committee on Recreation, Libraries, and Youth Affairs. He sits on three other committees. He could simply take a leave of absence and recuse himself from votes until this is resolved. If he wants to remain active on the council, mm -hmm. it would then be up to the council to take action. They could vote him off of his committees and chairmanship which is what the chairman of the council is recommending. The council could also vote to expel him, kick him off the council, but they would likely need more than just being charged. The last time the council came close to expelling a council member was Jack Evans, who was never charged, but the council had conducted their own independent investigation that found he violated ethics rules. Mm -hmm. And Mark, you mentioned this before, White's not the first elected leader to have a run with the law. You've covered other cases, many of them. Can you walk us through them? Sure. So again, the most recent was Jack Evans in 2020. He resigned during that ethics investigation. This is very much parallels what you're seeing here with the chairman saying they want to do their own ind independent investigation. The council in that case was set to vote to expel him, but he resigned before they could do that. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown in 2013, he was uh, charged with taking a $55,000 bribe in a coffee mug. Uh, he had already lost his re-election bid prior to being charged, uh, so he wasn't in office at that time. Kwame Brown, who was chairman of the council in 2012, he was charged and pled guilty to bank fraud and campaign finance violations. He resigned almost immediately uh, after being charged. And Harry Thomas Jr., back in 2012, served more than three years and were sentenced to more than three years in prison. Uh, as soon as he was charged back then, he also resigned. You'll remember Mayor Gray, when he was running uh, for re-election, mm -hmm. uh, he was also caught up in investigation. He was never charged. But that ended up with him uh, losing that re that reelection bid to, to become mayor to, to Mayor Bowser. And I would say when Harry Thomas uh, ran into his troubles, uh, then Mayor Gray, Kwame Brown, who was chairman, and then Councilmember Muriel Bowser, as soon as they were he was charged, they all called for him to resign. Uh, so there is a lot going on here. Uh, as far as what the council's role and what the council can do next. Mm -hmm. Of course, we also have the election coming up in uh, November 5th that uh, he is on the ballot for that as well. A, a long history there. Yes, and, and what is so aggravating is that the citizens of these districts that they represent had such high expectations of better performance and better representation. And here we are having this conversation all over again. Mark Seagraves, live for us tonight. Mark, thanks so much. Thank you, Mark.